Hello everyone. Today we will focus on the digital transformation framework. See what is digital transformation framework? Uh, if we talk about the present condition of the world, you can say that the world is uh, undergoing a digital transformation. See everything is now moving, whether it is uh, in the form of uh, gadgets or in the form of a process or in the form of a management system, or you can say the marketing. Everything is moving towards the digital transformation. If we talk about our smartphone, you can say that these smartphones are not only uh, using the digital technologies or which are driving businesses transformation. Uh, you can say the other technologies like uh, sensors, uh, scanner, RFID, NFC, GPS, Bluetooth social media posting, digital news feed, smart watches, fitness band, video surveillance, drone or even robotics uh, all are contributing in the digitalization of our physical world. So if we talk about the framing of the digital business uh, which is uh, transforming and uh, you can see that the digital business transforming uh, accelerates communication and improve coordination across uh, an organization value chain whether it is related to the design procurement uh, manufacturing inventory marketing sales support and shipping so these are basically turning into the massive amount of uh, detailed data about individual customer product and operational usage performance and current state data that can be covered into new digital intellectual assets so uh, you can say that uh, the most uh, important thing in the digital business transformation have opportunity which is uh, making a money aspect of the business information. If we talk about any business, business means a money. Wo apna business ka model is se create karna chahte hai, so that uh, the business should uh, earn more and more money. Right. So how to make a money? This is the main target of any business and for this the business is transformed into the another uh, you can say uh, platform. So here is where organizations can have a game changing impact on their value creation processes to the superiors and um, you can say it is not only constrained with the organizations, customers, products, uh, operations, partners, channels and markets. These game changing impacts uh, themselves in three ways. So what are these? We have to first understand in the case of the framing uh, the digital business transformation. The first one is the optimized key value chain process. See if we exploit uh, superior customer, you will find out the product and operation insights uh, uh, not to just improve existing business processes, but to actually change or retool the entire processes. So we have to just for uh, think about that how the processes can be changed for the optimum values. Next is the uncover new monetization opportunities. See we provide a leverage superior customer. If we think about the leverage superior customers product and operational insights to identify wide spaces and underserved uh, or unserved or unmet market that uh, turn into new monetization opportunities. New monetization opportunities means we have to just talk about the new product, new services, new partners, new channels, etc. Next is to create a more uh, compelling, more prospective customer experience. See, we have to just understand the individual customers' uh, tendencies. We have to understand what are their preferences, behaviors, trends, interests, passions, associations and affiliations to provide more rewarding customer and partner experience. So for any company or business, they need to catch more and more customers. They target more uh, new customer rather than they have to just consider their regular customers but they have to consider the new customers for this they have to first identify that what are the preferences of the new customer right so 
if they can understand the individual customer they can give the more uh, input to the uh, society next is if we talk about that uh, what is uh, digital transformation you can say that it's a journey of adopting new innovative technology and methods so whether you are a startup a mid-size enterprise or a huge corporate digital transformation is essential to reshaping your organization as i told you that whether you are serving for a small scale business or a large business or even if you are just a startup your business you have to adopt the digital platform next is we can first understand that it is the most structured and effective way to redefine your existing business models and experiments with new ones and it is only through this journey that you can gradually or simultaneously transform your operations uh, competencies employees and leadership so here we have to discuss about the digital leadership once again that digital leadership having a mainly four parts one is the leader team and network and trust so we can go for the decentralization organized so if we are talking about the leadership or digital leadership it should consist of we have to first is, uh, we have to understand it what is leadership right and who are you how are you connected to the leadership team what is organizational culture what is the culture of your organization what is the purpose of your organization what is the personal mission best and worst of your organization what are the issues today what are you, are you doing to work on them individually or as a team so you have to first identify all these things as a leadership and then you can go for the digital platform so digital transformation framework starts uh, at the top of the company it starts uh, with a focused vision that is often created and uh, led by a senior management and then it is carried out by the mid and lower level employee see if you talk about any business or any organization the organization has its a uh, vision and uh, some goals or mission so therefore if we talk about the sub departments of this entire organization you can say that their departments will serve to achieve the goal okay so similarly their entire team or you can say that uh, if we talk about the mid level or lower level employees they will also work for the common vision and goal so there are plenty of examples where executives uh, have uh, digitally transformed and uh, their parts uh, of the business also transform but uh, they are always uh, confined to the boundaries to their own units or department they will not cross their boundaries they will not uh, move to uh, beyond their uh, departments right so the top management has to be in the driving seat for the company and whereas the other uh, department will work uh, for the top management next is we have to just think about that uh, this uh, is the digital transformation framework see in this picture you can see that the six basic building blocks that makes digital transformation possible so on the right side picture you will see that the six blocks are first one is the strategy so what is the strategy second is the process and innovation next is culture and uh, then technology then customer engagement and data analytics so this six, six blocks are important to uh, when these blocks are combined together it will convert it into a digital transformation so uh, you can say that uh, digital transformation framework is only seen as a part of the technology and uh, it and uh, this uh, is not always true for any transform uh, you can say system so digital transformation is uh, about uh, adapting to change in every department of a company starting from its topmost employees to the most low level ones 
so if we talk about the ni organization you can say that it is very necessary to adopt this uh, digital transformation because it will accelerate your process or your work so if we talk about the digital strategy framework it will have a uh, you can say that two main uh, uh, aspect where is uh, you can say with the help of the given digital transformation framework in this picture you can create a data driven iterative strategy for your company data driven iterative strategy see for any company the main objective of the company is to collect data so the traditional method collecting data is uh, uh, you can say very tedious job for any company and the analysis of the data is much uh, you can say tedious so but because uh, we are uh, working on the digital platform or connected with the internet or iot this can be easily done by the system therefore you can start out uh, by finding which quadrant of your company falls into so therefore uh, you can say that uh, we can divide into the four quadrants first one is the advocacy so advocacy means when you grow your business organically and every customer acquisition is done face to face you are trying to get the word of uh, word out through your own content or blog this is basically the advocacy which is having a, a you can say that it will the media is also serve for the advocacy where uh, whatever you created in your blog or your content the uh, this uh, business will uh, move towards your content and customer will be uh, convinced with your uh, you can say that uh, the content whatever you produced so uh, next is the attention attention means how to attract the people See, there is a large part of your business which comes uh, to through social media channels and running ads so you seek attention by pushing ads so whatever uh, ads you have generated you have to just push your ads so that you can get the attention of the customers next is the authority authority means you have uh, created something so innovative uh, that it has uh, gone viral so the media is talking about means uh, what you created it should be you can say that uh, the catch point of the uh, customer first uh, attractive point of the customers for this the uh, you can say that uh, media will help you to accelerate your market next is the prime prime means when you grow your business using all the methods available in the market you are the market leader in your industry and region so once you have identified your quadrant at macro level you want to define your path towards where you want to go the section on the left uh, helps you to do so in addition to diagnosing your companies uh, at a micro level so it has a uh, four main components one is uh, yourself market customer and resources yourself means what are your goals what is your value proposition so you have to first identify that what is your uh, uh, what, what are your targets what are your uh, vision okay what, what is your vision what are your uh, missions okay all these things you have to first find out what exactly you want to, to do for your market uh, for your business you have to identify your strength and weakness also right so proper diagnosis is uh, very important and then we have to just go for the next step which is called as the market market means you have to just check that how much competition do you have how is your competition doing in the market who are your competitors you have to first identify so that uh, means whatever strategy you have to prepare it must depend upon your market analysis so market analysis means aapko sabse pehle identify karna padega ki market mein aapke competitors kaun kaun se hain right what are the similar kind of products in the market and how they are marketing their products so on the basis of this you have to just create your uh, companions or marketing uh, tools so that it can force 
Next is the customer. Customer means who are your existing customer? What customer do you want to target? You have to first identify the need. You can say that uh, their demographic area wise. Okay, all these things you have to first understand that what volume of the customer you want to target. So these all things you have to just plan in this section. And the last one is the resources. Resources means aapke paas kya kya hain available. For example, means what kind of resources do you have and what more do you require to achieve your goals? This is very understand before starting any uh, digital strategy framework that we have to first identify our uh, infrastructure. You can say that uh, your manpower and then uh, you can say that your budget. See, budget is also very important because uh, it will uh, give you a leverage to improve your market in the uh, uh, people. Okay, so that uh, if uh, all these uh, your answers must be supported with real data evidence. So this framework will allow you to create a strategy that will be iterative and will change you find more data your decisions and uh, journey will be data driven so data driven means whatever data you have collected today you prepare your strategy accordingly but if you talk about after two years or three years the requirement of the customer will change see for example if we talk about the microsoft see microsoft is launching their operating system in uh, you can say yearly or uh, two years or three years maximum right so because they get the feedback of the customers if they are analyzing the feedback of their users then they can easily find out that what new their customers are demanding so on the basis of their demand or data, whatever they collected, they have to plan their strategy and this strategy will be iterative. So you can say that whatever strategy you plan today, it will not serve tomorrow. So tomorrow you have to change. Your data will not be uh, useful or you can say this data, whatever you have today will not be sufficient for the future. So you can say that this journey or you can say that uh, strategy should be data dri driven. Next is uh, we have to create new business model. What is the requirement of this that why we want to create a new model and uh, for the most companies you can say it can be challenging to create a new business model with their existing resources and uh, way of working because way of working means uh, the people are familiar with the entire working of the system right so whatever uh, resources they have and uh, they created uh, the entire business model on the basis of their resources so uh, if we understand we can see that in this uh, infographic we can show that how an established company can create a new business model by bringing about small innovative changes to their existing way of working. If you see this picture, you will find out that there is a new department or lead innovation department. What is the meaning of this department? See, this department is totally independent, right? And it is working to uh, serve or to give the input to the other uh, cells of the department or you can say the uh, organization where the strategy can move okay can uh, you can say that a company must create a new department that uh, can run like a separate entity outside of the company core business and uh, this uh, department uh, will run the company and uh, must hire an independent team with an innovative mindset so that it can generate some innovations completely separately and it should follow the philosophy of lean innovations 
Deal innovations means don't let uh, perfection get in the way of your progress. See, if you talk about the <clears throat> perfection, see perfection is not the end. You can say that it is a, 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 a continuous process, right? See, if you are talking about the excellence, excellence is not the end of the, uh, you can say that your uh, journey, you can say it is the way of your progress. So, if you understand that uh, what is the purpose of the department, this department can function as a startup. It can follow the lean startup principle of testing and validating various ideas and uh, it can scale up those ideas that are validated successfully with data as a evidence. So uh, here you can understand that uh, how the things are going on once uh, this entire team or innovative team will work, it will uh, give the information to the different cell like a value proposition uh, canvas, then brainstorming assumptions with the uh, right hypothesis and uh, whatever things they plan, they will go for the experiment design, minimum success matrix, time box and then uh, in the fourth step, it will uh, get out of the building to talk about to potential customers, right? So then uh, the next is the decision, insight and learning and finally result. So if there is any, um, you can say that uh, problem uh, with the result, it can further uh, uh, remove to the brainstorming session. So therefore this cycle will work in this way, but this, uh, you can say data is work, uh, you can say this uh, new department will work as an innovative department or you can say a separate department as a startup for the company. So here we will discuss about uh, that how to reinvent existing business model. See what is the requirement? Why we want to go for the uh, reinvent existing business model? See as I told you because the, there are uh, not only the marketing and sales there must be for the uh, one is the information technology and digital operations also. So therefore, on the left side of this digital transformation framework, you can see that how a company can reinvent its existing business model by bringing about innovation in progress uh, processes, processes, cost and product management. Then uh, in addition or you can say uh, the transitional IT setup, it takes two to three months to get business requirement. Another six months or so in the development phase and uh, another two to three months in testing and deployment. So the modern agile setup brings all of these elements together in one cross-functional team, thus making the entire process very seamless. So the waiting period between different teams gets reduced, communication becomes more effective and there is more efficiency in the system. So if we talk about all these things which are associated to, uh, together or combined together means Agile, Development Operations and Lean UX, then it will create a new culture. So under the Lean UX, the team directly talks to the customer to get the requirements. These requirements are promptly turned into a prototype that is validated by the customer. The Agile methodology enables small cycles of the development, thus ensuring continuous customer feedback. So therefore, the development uh, uh, operations bring about the automation in testing and deployment and integrations. So this is the working of this uh, uh, team. Next is the technology. The technology is very important and we have to understand that how uh, we keep technology as a horizontal bar at the bottom of the infographic because it is just uh, an enabler of the digital transformation. So as a company, uh, we don't, uh, uh, you can say that, uh, have to adopt uh, every new technology in the market, but also those that are relevant to your business model, whether it is a new or existing. So, what is the meaning? If we want to make changes in business, 
we want to adopt a new technology we, it does not mean that we have to remove our previous technology which is working uh, efficiently so we have to consider both the technology and uh, check whether the technology can support each other or not therefore there are some digital operations also which combines the value chain applications devices technology and all these things are connected with the iot so because uh, everything which are uh, you can say as i have already discussed uh, that uh, uh, devices like uh, smart homes you can say sensors you can say tickets or your gadgets your uh, cell phones or uh, your um, uh, other uh, electronic or uh, analog, uh, digital devices all these devices are connected with the iot so technology we have to just understand whether this technology is based on the cloud big data or 3d printing right so therefore we have to understand whether these things are supporting your business or not or it is uh, suitable for the digital operations or not next is the value chain so if we talk about the marketing and sales you can better understand it has a two aspect where we have to consider the four parameters first we have to understand your uh, know yourself then your customer competition and resources now when you consider all these things it will leads to the say uh, you can say a uh, simple proposition and complex propositions so this is the cycle of the marketing and sales thank you very much